I don't believe in giving up. Because when you do that, then I feel like you're going to have regret. And I'm the type of person I don't live with any regret. I'm going to do whatever I want to do in this life. Hey, everyone. I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With the Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Hey everybody, it's Morgan Devon. Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. I'm so excited today. We are going to get all into the world of sports, love, and just living your life to your fullest. And I'm here with Cynthia Deck. We are podcasting from our respective spots. I'm in Nashville today. You're in Atlanta. And (laughs) we're going to get into it. So I guess just tell the people a little bit more about the space that you're in today and how are you prioritizing your time and like what have you been working on? So for the most part, if anybody follows me, everybody knows I have the ACL injury. I got ACL surgery actually three months ago. So I'm getting better. I'm still working my way through this, but it's been a journey. I am doing a lot with my shoe company right now. We're currently in Champs and Lenox Mall, also in Pembroke Pines, Florida. And we're in five athletes' feet, foot, feet. I can never say the name right, y'all. Here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we have one in D.C. So we've been honestly grinding it out. We have some really awesome projects coming. We're going to be launching cleats very soon. So we will be the first women, period, in that space, which will be pretty awesome for me and my mom. And I have a new book out as well called More Than an Athlete. It's about my journey from childhood to now, how I got to this point, and what I realized through depression after getting this injury. So let's talk about the footwear. When I was starting for our conversation today, I thought it was really interesting that you were basically like, look, I was a brand ambassador and I was moving mad product. And then the designer said, hey, have you considered like doing this for yourself? And like Mm -hmm. a lot of people I think would get that kind of question and be like, nah, I'm not about to do this. That's not my identity. Like I'm not a footwear manufacturer what was your initial like oh yeah you know what I think I can do this how did you was your thought process during that yeah when he said that I was thrown off a little bit because I'm like I've just been moving y'all's product and I was pretty content with that honestly but I was like you know what it would be cool to have like my own line under this company I love taking on new challenges I love also love having my own like custom anything or having a percentage of whatever that makes sense to me or whatever so I was like, yeah, I felt like I had the following, the engagement. I felt like people were already into like me selling shoes and clothes. So I was like, this is a no brainer for me, honestly. So Mm -hmm. I was excited. (laughs) So basically it's a line underneath the company that already exists. Is that how they set it up? So that it was easier? Yeah, that's how it was at first. For the first, I would say four days before my mom got involved. (laughs) Because shout out to your mom. She was like, "Uh oh, we're not doing that. Yeah, she's a a lioness for sure. That's great. So then what happened? So then my mom, I told her, she was like, I think we should just do a shoe company if we're going to do all that. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, like you already been moving their products. You know that you have the engagement. We know your analytics. We know like everything about your followers. We know you have sneakerheads following you. You can do this. And I was like, mm-hmm. mom, we, ha- we would have to go against Nike, Adidas, all of these like big dog companies. And I was like, that's going to be dang near impossible. She was like, no, 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 no. You can do it. I believe in you. And she told me to pray on it. And mm-hmm. I remember that night I ended up praying on it. And I, I swear I could hear God pretty much saying like, hey, if you do this and it fails, you can say I tried to make a shoe company, which is still pretty dope to say, right? And then yeah. he was also like, but if you don't fail, oh my gosh, the generational wealth, the little girls that will be able to see that this is possible, the little boy, same thing. And you will be literally pretty much opening the door for the next generation. And that sounded Mm -hmm. better than that. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to just take this leap. And I did it. And it wasn't that easy. I don't, I try to tell people, don't think that I just woke up the next day and I just had a shoe company because it took me two years (laughs) to get to the point to where I could even like put out a product. And it was during COVID, literally in the midst of the pandemic. And it was hell trying to get our product to our customers because the ports were closed. And it was Chinese New Year. It was just so much chaos that was happening. And I remember me and my mom like sitting like in the middle of our, of our floor at that time in our office. And we were just crying. We were like, oh my God, like 
we're about to, we're gonna miss the deadline we're that's gonna be mm. it for our company because we were new so if we would have had all these pre-orders and then our customers wouldn't have got their product up for until the next summer Ooh, we would no gosh. longer be here so all i can say is god made a way for us because we literally got our order in i think we had maybe five minutes before our our manufacturer was like we're done we're closing we got chinese new year we're out of the office yeah and yeah. we barely made but what we did i remember my mom we just fell back and we just <laughs> hugged each other and we were like we did it we did it like we were just screaming and man it was a journey it was such a journey yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I think people underestimate the amount of hard work that happens behind the scenes when it comes to bringing any product to fruition. And not just the hard work time spent, but the mental resilience. And I think one of the things that I admire about you and your story is just your mental resilience is incredible. And of course, you have your ups and downs like everybody else, but you're able to push through. What do you think has given you that muscle, that skill set to be able to defy these odds and keep going? I would like to say, because I'm a Scorpio, (laughs) But I know it's definitely more than that. I think growing up in the household that I grew up in, I'm not going to say I was the only girl, but I had an older sister, but she was way older than me. So she was out the house when I was growing up. So it was me, my twin brother, and then my older brother, my younger brother. So I grew up with boys. So having to deal with boys on a daily basis, I was doing everything they were doing. And then also, I think the way our parents raised us. My mom was an entrepreneur. So was my stepfather. And they made sure we understood what that was. They made sure they, uh, that we understood that it wasn't easy. And when you do this, you can get this. This is the end result. And all of that was pretty much perseverance. And also mm-hmm. being an athlete. I think I probably have to owe most of that to who I am today because I've had so many ups and downs in sports. Like I was always injured. I would almost make it to nationals and I would get injured or something would happen. So, but I never mm-hmm. gave up. I've been injured since I don't know how long. I got to college, got a full ride to Texas and m Kingsville, then mm-hmm. graduated, tried to make it to the Olympics, <laughs> got injured. And then I was like, you know what? I would try something that was one more time, got into rugby. So I was just always going, going. I don't believe in giving up. Cause when you do that, then I feel like you're gonna have regret. And I'm the type of person, I don't live with any regret. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do in this life. I feel like that's why yeah. God put us here. So I think just having that mindset it's like, you can't lose. You're going you to get there eventually. It might take a while, but you're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, it might take a while. But if you can keep up, I, I agree with that. I think as an entrepreneur and someone who has tried a lot of things and also like, you know, had setbacks and stuff along the way, what I see so often with other people is that they just give up. And it's like, you know, actually setbacks are actually part of the process. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's how you build the resilience so that things can't push you down as much. And I'm curious exactly. for you because your body is your money maker and is your tool and certainly was like earlier in your career how has your relationship with your body changed and morphed as you've you know gone from high school to your 20s to you know now being married maybe one day starting a family like how has your relationship with your body changed the the crazy thing is my body has honestly been the same since I was in college up until last Mm. year when I got this injury Mm. and I couldn't move and I started to act, like gain weight and I started to have all yeah. these other things. I'm like, what's happening? And that also kind of set me into a depression too because I've never experienced that. And it's been tough. I mean, even to this day, like I'm, I'm finally able to finally get in the gym now that I'm cleared. But it's, mm-hmm. it's been tough looking at myself in the mirror and, and remembering and realizing like, oh man, I no longer have my, my abs that I've had since I was like four years yeah. old. And things yeah. like that. And it, but it, it also motivates me because it's almost like a project for me. So it's like I'm upset not, or not upset. I, I guess I just feel. I don't know. I, I don't feel like myself, but at the same time, I'm like, I know I can get back there. So let's actually mm-hmm. do this. Let's get on this and let's show other people that this is possible because mm-hmm. it, it was a lot for me. And I remember telling my, my mom and my fiance, I'm like, man, I I don't even recognize myself right now. Like mm-hmm. I look completely different than I looked even a year ago right now and it's been it's been interesting but I also feel like this is part of my story this is part of you know my story that's going to motivate people to show them that anything is possible and you can get through this it sucks but Mm -hmm. when you get to the other side you're gonna have a story to tell somebody to hopefully help somebody else in their life and that's what I look at everything all of my lessons I'm like one day either I'm gonna help my children or I'm Mm -hmm. gonna help some person out somewhere that might be going through the same thing and think that it's over with. And I'm here to just show them like, no, you can really get through anything. It sucks. It's tough. You're going to have days where you're crying, you're on the floor, you in your prayer closet, whatever it may be. But when you get through it, oh my gosh, 
the people that you're going to be able to help. So that's the way I look yeah. at it. Yeah. I mean, I think that you can't control what you can't control. Right. Yeah. I think that I, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, I, I don't make money off of my physical strength, but my mental strength. So when my mental's mm-hmm. down, it impacts my ability to make decisions. It impacts how I interact with my employees, with the people around me. And I'm like, yo, we gotta, you gotta snap out of it faster. You know, Mm -hmm. what are the rituals that you have in your life today as you like are on this road of recovery? Like what are the things that you're doing? Right now, you know, besides physical therapy and acupuncture and different things like that. And I'm actually Mm -hmm. about to start something new that I saw like on, (laughs) on the internet. It's like, I don't know, soft tissue therapy. So they, they kind of help us with like the inflammation around my injury, but also taking breaks. I, I think that's been one of the hardest things that I've I've had to do because I'm literally like a energizer bunny and I'm a workaholic. I get that from my parents, but I think realizing like, oh, I actually have to be still. I actually have to sit down. I can't just go over yeah. here and keep trying to push and push and push because all that's doing is hurting my knee even more, setting me back. So I was actually struggling with just doing that. And I, I it was so mm-hmm. tough for me. I, I, I was like, I'm, am I lazy? Am I bum now? Like what's happening? Like I, yeah. I literally yeah. can't, I'm so tired all the time. Like what's yeah. happening? But when I actually yeah. rested for like a full week, I actually took a whole week off. Oh my God. Like I felt like a new person. I felt right. so like rejuvenated. I felt like I found peace with like my injury and all just things that I wasn't able to even process because I was moving so much. Last year, me and my mm-hmm. fiance, traveled 25 times and <laughs> I had an injury on top of that. So it was just like so much happening, but I was like, this is what I need to do. I need to have these days where I'm like, actually like, okay, I'm shutting everybody out, all the noise and I'm yeah. focusing on myself. And when I did that, yeah. I realized like, oh, I need to also go and get massages. I need to also go and do this. And I started really like developing like this little self care process. And pretty much, like, I, I have these days where I just, I, again, I tune everybody out. I either go get my mm-hmm. nails done, go get my hair done, go and spend time with my family since, like, I'd be so busy. And my mom is, like, an hour away. And I, don't, I always make an excuse mm-hmm. of, well, I'm not going to go. But I, I'm starting to do that more. But actually, mm-hmm. like, living. And not just yeah. not just focusing on, like, okay, how can I get to this next opportunity? How can I finish this project? But, like, oh, this it's pretty outside. Let me go and take a walk. Like, things like that mm-hmm. that matter that you're going to remember when you're sitting on your rocking chair at like 90 years old, like, Oh man, I remember that beautiful day. Me and blah, blah, blah. You know, and you have these memories and I care about memories. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I said a lot. Yeah. But. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I think that's beautiful. Tell me about how you met your fiance. <laughs> so I met Isaac on Bumble. Bumble. Yeah. I met him on a dating app. And it's, I'm going to try to make the story short cause it's, it's kind of long, but I was pretty <laughs> much on dating size. Right. And I was like, and what year was this? This was last year. This during COVID? No, this, this was last year. Last year. Oh, yeah. so you guys moved fast. Okay. Moved super, yeah, it moved super fast. So I had a, yeah, I was on dating side, a dating side or whatever, Bumble. And I remember like, I had, I was already on there, I think a month before I met him, but I was like, this is horrible. Like these men are trapped. Like just all of these different things. I was, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of and weird. And Atlanta dating pool. The worst, the worst. Know, yeah. The worst. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I had one on a couple of days and I'm like, okay, I'm like literally just going to move and move to another country at this point. But <laughs> I was Damn. on there. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. So I, and I was like, I was, I was fed up. So I had got on there on Valentine's I know this sounds so sad, but it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> and I had got on there and I was like, no, no, no. It was two days before Valentine's Day. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm just going to try this one more time. And I remember I was swiping, swiping. And I saw his profile and I was like, hmm, okay, let me look. And I like, and I saw his bio and it was like mine, like very to the point, like I'm ready to settle down. I want a wife, mm-hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not here to play games. And mine was very much the same. I was like, cool. And so I swiped, you know, was it right? It's good. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. A few days had passed and I was like, and he was on my, like his profile was on my mind, which never happened. I was like, why am I thinking about mm-hmm. this random person's profile? And I remember yeah. on Valentine's Day, I was like, you know what? I'm just deleting this. This is sad. He's if if he doesn't respond back, if he didn't respond back today, hopefully he'll be back on here like in two years when I try to get back on. And I was literally <laughs> not even exaggerating, not kidding. I was going to delete like the delete button, and he slid in my actual like direct messages, and we oh, had a conversation. And at first, I was about to block him because he was like, "Oh, like." I, First of all, hey, how are you doing? My name is Isaac. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. We kind of talked for like, we'd said maybe 
five sentences to each other. Then he was like, so mm-hmm. there's this entrepreneurial like summit that I think you would be great for. And I was like, okay, uh, uh-uh. uh, like I'm not on here red trying flag, to, red yeah, flag. that was like red flag. I'm not on here trying to do business. I'm trying to find a, my husband. And you over here talking about business? And he was like, first yeah, you of want all, a speaking engagement. Yeah, because he was like, I, I saw that you do this and do that, and I was like, um, I'm not interested Sorry. in dating fans. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> his response was like, I don't even know you for real. And I was like, okay, but you looked me up on Instagram though. <laughs> right. But you looked me up though. Right? He was like, I was just, I was just trying to give you an opportunity because I felt like you were, this would be good for you. And I was like, okay, let me okay. calm down. Let me calm down. He put kind of put me in my place. <laughs> so I was like, cool, my bad. I was like, look, I have a lot of people out here that just be doing things. So we started talking, and we probably talked yeah. for like the whole day on and off. I was doing stuff. He was doing stuff. He was mm-hmm. also at like some convention in Florida or LA. And eventually we got mm-hmm. off. We got off the internet. And then we had our first date. So that was Valentine's Day, right? That's when we actually had a conversation. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. got my number. And then he got back in town a few weeks later. And then we met. And it was that was it. I remember walking in. And I seen him. And I was like, okay, look. He's still he's tall. He looks like himself. Okay, I'm good. Because I, I yeah. I'm sorry, but I can't you do know, anything no under six foot. So I was like, okay, cool. And so no, we had a conversation. <laughs> and I was like, the first thing that came out of my mouth was like, oh, wow. You made me feel calm. And mm. he, to this day, a year and some change later, I still feel the same exact way. And God confirmed mm. it through dreams and everything, which has never happened to me. God, God normally confirms that you need to run. So I was waiting on those dreams. Yeah, it's time to go. Yeah, I was waiting. <laughs> but everything was like, was so positive. And I was like, and then my mom called me a month, two months into mm. us, like getting to know each other and dating. And she was like, it was 3 a.m. She was like, Cynthia, mm-hmm. that's my son-in-law. And my mom hates mm. everybody. She don't like nobody. And I was like, you, what, you feel this way? And she was like, yeah, he's, he's the one. And I swear, oh, it wow. just everything just took off. Like, it has been amazing. Like, I have no complaints. I rated a, a 10. That's incredible. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah, 10 out of 10. What did you have to do to prepare yourself to, like, be in that place to receive? Like, as a Girl. woman who, I mean... You're an athlete, so you do have, like, more masculine energy mm-hmm. than, like, probably a lot of people, but you were very feminine. Right. So, like, did you – when did you make that transition, or do you feel like you always, like, balanced it well? So, to be honest with you, I feel like I've always – I felt like I've always been pretty balanced because, yes, I can go out on a football field and break people's ankles, but when it comes to, like, Literally. who I'm da- – <laughs> li- Right. When it comes to who I'm dating, I feel like – I'm always very, very feminine. That's just like who I am. I think people are surprised. I think I get a misconception. I think most mm-hmm. people I think get a misconception because they see us like on the field and in our mm-hmm. uniforms. But every mm-hmm. every man that has ever said, oh man, I thought you were masculine. Like you had to, not masculine, but I thought you were like, you know, you had this little whatever about you. You were just tough and blah, blah, blah. I was like, they're like, you're actually like a teddy bear. And I'm like, I know, like, I don't get it. But mm-hmm. I feel like I developed more of that. I would say... It started in 2021, and I had got out of, like, a mm-hmm. horrific relationship. It was, yeah, it was, like, the worst relationship of my life. And I remember I, I was, like, why? No, I remember my mom asked me. She said, Cynthia, do you really love yourself? And I was, like, mm. of course I do. What are you talking about? And I got so mad at her for asking me that question. She was, like, if you love yourself, why do you keep putting yourself through these same exact cycles? And I was like, it's not me, it's not me, it's them. I keep, and then one day I sat in my, I was sitting in my house and I was like, I'm the problem. It's me. Every person that I've ever dated from like college to now have been the same exact human, same exact man, just in a different Mm -hmm. body, energy. Like they have to be athletic, they have Mm -hmm. to be this, they have to, and I get that. And then they literally bit by bit tear me down. And then I have to go and heal yeah. myself. And then they, they, I find somebody else, they tear me down. Then I got to go heal again. But it was not really healing. Right. And so I remember right. when I had that, like, aha moment, I literally just dove into therapy. I dove into mm-hmm. relationship podcasts. And not just watching women, but actually watching men and understanding men and, like, what they actually – happily happily married men. Let me not mm-hmm. say these little new age – yeah, we're not say, even gonna get into those. No, no hotels. Yeah, no yeah, hotels. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. <laughs> but actually, people no. that had a success rate, you could actually see them, and you know their stories and everything. Yeah. And I was reading books. Uh, I actually was mm-hmm. like, I'm not dating anybody. Like, I'm not going on no dates. I'm not entertaining none of these men. Mm-hmm. And I did that for like mm-hmm. I think almost a full. No, no, no. I guess it was probably about almost nine months. 
And that was the yeah. longest that I went without, like, not even, like, texting a guy, right? Entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Texting, yeah. yeah. And it can be lonely. It was you know, so lonely. Just all of that, hey, how was your yeah, day? Just, yeah, just to have that, that right? <laughs> and I, but yeah, I, I yeah. realized, like, that's the problem. Like, I feel like I got to always have something happening. And then I was like, I'm actually doing it. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it was so, when I tell you, it was so hard. I was so miserable. But I was like, I got to get through this. And when I came out on, on the mm-hmm. other side, when I tell you, I was such a different person in the dating world. Like I literally had I already, I already know my non-negotiables. So on my first dates, I was like, "Hey, how you doing? Let's talk." Blah blah blah. Right? Then I'd be like, "So what's this? What's this?" They they did. But and, and, and I, I ain't gonna say it was literally like I was sitting there like list by list. But like through <laughs> conversation, I was asking these questions, and immediately I was like, "Oh, he's not the one." There was my last day before mm. Isaac. My last, well, one of second to last. There was this guy. I met him on Bubble again, right? And I was like, all right, I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just try. And we got to Ponce, Ponce City Market or whatever it was called. And mm-hmm. we were waiting for our table to go eat somewhere. And I started asking him my questions. And the, one mm-hmm. of the first questions I asked, I said, so are you spiritual? And he was like, well. Fair question. Yeah. And I don't know why I didn't ask this before today because normally I do. But I don't know what happened. He slipped through the cracks. <laughs> and, and he was like, well, you know, like. You know, my mom is a pa- was my a pastor. My father was this. He was like, but you know, okay. I like I kind of realized like God is like the universe, like you know. And he started talking about like the stars and the moon. And I was like, you know what? I I literally got up physically got up, and I was like, this is not gonna work. I said, I believe in Christ. I believe in God. I'm a Christian. Yeah. I said, but you have a great day. And he was like, you're really you. going to like, he said, you're not even going to go eat. I said, Leave right now. I said, this time, I said, honestly, if we go eat, I'm just going to be here for the meal because I know this isn't going to work. And he, like, he, he actually, I swear, that. I swear. And he was like, and he looked at me at first. I could say he's he about to get mad, but he was like, I appreciate your honesty. Okay. And he said, and I, and yeah. I said, have it. Cause men can't have it both ways. Exactly. I feel like I've seen men who are like, don't ask us for a free meal. when you already know. Da, 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 da. I was like, okay, well then if I tell you I'm out. They respect it, right? They respect and he, it. Yeah, yeah and he I mean, was cool with it. He was like, "Cool, all right." Yeah, and that's when I realized, like, <laughs> okay, I'm healed for real because I don't, I don't care. Like, if I don't talk to nobody, I'm good. Like, I want who I, my person, and that's how all yeah, of my I think that's went. the key. Yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of women, get stuck so desperate for anyone, yes. someone, and then they're actually not totally comfortable with. Okay, I don't want anything less than everything. Yes. You yes. know? And I feel like that's that's what you're describing. Mm-hmm. It's like I want everything. Yep. And anything less than that is an immediate no. Exactly. I should need to convince myself. I should need to talk myself and no. like, be like, well, mm-hmm. well. And that was well. me. That was me in every <laughs> single situation. I was like, ah, oh, so he has this, like, oh he's Maybe. This, he's this athlete, but his yeah. person but I could work with him. Like, and that's what I was always like, you know, negotiating what I know I really wanted with myself. And every time yeah, I did that, I it was it. always pain, heartache, wasting my time, having to go on yeah. this journey of self-discovery <laughs> like a million times. And what one day I just, I, that day I was like, I'm good on all of this. Like I'm not, it, it definitely in Atlanta. Did you have to switch? I'm definitely in Atlanta. Did you have to switch anything off your list? Like when you decided that you were, like marriage minded and dating where you like, okay, I can let these things go For sure. if he's got these things. Yeah. So I would say <laughs> they were, they were like petty stuff. Like, okay. So at first my requirement was you have to be like at least six, three, because I don't yeah. know. I just was like, that Come was my thing. I know I was doing too much and I would not even <laughs> entertain anybody that was like under that for real. Like, I would do again a six foot. I would if if it was like okay, he this, but he's six foot. I was cool, but under that, I was like, I'm I'm never talking to you. Like it's a no go. Straight. And yeah, so I, I finally was yeah. like, I'm open to this. As long as, as long as you taller than me, I can deal with it. And I actually was cool with that. You're you're like five five, seven, five <laughs> So it's not hard to be. Oh my god, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know I was doing the most. I will I'll be honest with everybody right now. I was doing the most. I was doing the most. And then also, I wanted them. To- I think the people need to hear this. The ladies, take these little height requirements off Please your do. list. Because here's the thing: when I look at my man now, I don't think I would have dated him five years ago either. But 
like when I look at him, I'm like, you're like six two to me. Like how how I look at you, you feel six yes. two. I asked him, I said, how old, how tall are you? He was like five ten. I said, no, <laughs> you're not six feet. Right, right, man. But when they make to you me, feel you're good. like, yeah, it's like they become everything. It just it, it might it might look different. But yeah, it was a high. I love like nice hair. Isaac is bald headed. Mm-hmm. He has no hair. So I was like, oh, right. that's different. He's got a beard though. He got he does have a beard. Now the beard, I don't know if I could go without a man with a beard. Like I, I think that you need that is the one thing. Hair. I'm just like, please wrong. have something. Like have a strip, like, uh, something. Yeah, <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, a little I think everything else he spiritual. Like, he was everything else that I wanted, I think, for the most mm. part. He's um, an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, loves his family. Go to. I didn't want nobody that didn't have kids because I don't have kids. At yeah, this tough. I tried it. I tried it, y'all. No offense. But yeah, it just I've tried it too. Fun. It's tough. It's so tough. But yeah. there, there are amazing single fathers. So I mean, I just bash all y'all. And then with me being an athlete, I wanted to date an athlete. So that was like my. I've been doing mm. that since I was in like middle school. Like athletic or someone who gets paid to be an like paid was what I was doing, like used to, but I started Going to be like, okay, as long as you play, like, I don't care. Like, as long as you were an athlete. Yeah. And Isaac was like, he didn't play like in college or anything, but he, he was like, athlete. like he was, how do I explain Sports it? He was guy. just like into fitness. Like he, he used to play basketball a lot. He still plays basketball right. to this day. And I was like, okay, like as long as you in the gym, like I can work with that now. So athletic. like, yeah, yeah, athletic. I'm trying. I'm my, see in my brain. I'm like, athletic means you an athlete right now, or mm. you retired a year ago. But that makes sense. So I had to let that go too, because no offense again. Yeah. Child dealing with them athletes is a little bit different. Yeah. A little bit different. Yeah. No. And I realized no, like no, you're no, doing the most. Just because you an athlete yeah. don't mean that you got to be one. And I had to let that go too. And when I tell you yeah. the peace that came from letting that go. I feel like I immediately attracted better people because I was like, I don't even, That's I don't right. care. And now, and at that point too, if you told me you were athlete, I'll be like, I'm good. I'm not dealing with y'all. Not. I'm not <laughs> saying that all I y'all bad, list. but I would say probably 90% of y'all are just not ready for love. <laughs> Let's just be honest. That's right. So I have to let that yeah. go too. And honestly, like, I feel like I got everything and more. It might not have been like the, the stupid, like he's six five or six three or he got curly hair or whatever. But yeah. everything else that he came with and just the things that I I learned about him, I was like, oh my God, like I never know I need I never knew I needed this. That's what I was gonna say. Was there other things that he brought to the table that you're like, oh, if I had to remake my list, like I would put this on here. I just didn't know. Yeah, that there that were there were option. a few things. But I don't know if you saw that I wrote I I I've been writing I was writing Dear Future Husband post since two thousand sixteen. Yes. What I saw was those, eerie and about I saw that? Your- was yeah. when I was going back over it with him because I was like, I have to show you these little notes I was making. And I, we were reading it. I was like, you're literally all of I've these described. things that I was saying. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, that's weird. I was like, I know. And I was like, that's how you know. Like, God was like, you know that's what? You know. My child, you've been through enough. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. You ain't gonna have no And that's also here. what probably gave you the clarity. That's probably what gave you the yeah. like freedom mentally to say, okay, great. He's here. I'm done. Yes. I don't need to like keep yes. it going and keep my options open and text these people I was nope. texting. Then people got cut off so fast. I ain't giving them no warning. I was go. like, I'm out. Blog, blog, yeah. blog. <laughs> like I didn't care because wow. I was like, this is this is this is God confirmed it so I know it's real. But whew, it was a journey. It was a dirty. Yeah. That's all I can say. What's the plans for the wedding? Man, so we were going back and forth between doing a destination wedding, doing one mm-hmm. here in Georgia, doing one in Florida. So we literally finally, mm-hmm. like this week, we decided that we're going to actually just do something super intimate, mm-hmm. mo- mainly like our super close friends and family. And then next year, when our schedules are kind of, I don't even know when our schedules are not going to be crazy, but yeah. we're going to, for our one year anniversary, we're going to do something overseas. So this is going to be mm-hmm. cute and small. And we're going to get it out the way. And then next yeah. year we'll have our little, you know, extravaganza. <laughs> yeah. So. I go back and forth on if I want a big wedding or not. Like, part of me is like, oh, big weddings, kind of fun. It's a big party. 
yeah literally throw events for a living you know oh yeah i can do this <laughs> in my sleep like my team will be like yes give us a wedding right you know? <laughs> that's part of and then i'm like oh we can have like you know sarah jakes roberts there oh, like you know giving us a nice. prayer like right. you know like, I'm like yeah if we do a big thing you can be like, extra be like, as possible hey, <laughs> so extra yeah so extra yeah and then the other side of me is just like do you really want more <laughs> Like, more want. work <laughs> yeah like more work like you should just go to costa rica and get married on a beach and with like yeah and your parents that's what i'm Both saying that's my that was my original thing i want to get married like on the beach i want to have i wanted me and Isaac to come down on horses and then we get off the horses Ooh. say our vows get back on the horses we have all these videographers right, like okay. taking pictures as we're running off into the sunset on our little yeah exactly like <laughs> movie type stuff and then when i was planning this i was like I'm tired. Like I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. Right. I said let's 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 try to do this next year because this year, let's just have our let's just be together. Let's actually do it, and then we can plan something yeah. else later. But when I tell you we were going back and forth for like, I don't know how long, like six months, on what we wanted to do. So now we're just like, so, yeah, well, I'm not even engaged, yet, but I've I've already negotiated these things. Like this I'm is saying, what we that's good though, because <laughs> I was like in my head the whole time I was like, this is I'm having the biggest extra wedding possible and it yeah. totally changed but i don't know look i tell people i not tell people i think from from my personal experience do what makes you happy because i started yeah. like when i was starting to plan i was thinking like oh my guests were like this oh my guests my guests my guests and it mm. became more about my guests and like oh what do me and isaac actually want at this point point? Mm-hmm. and that's when i was like and isaac is just like i don't care whatever you want to do whatever i don't care i just want to be married to you and I'm and I'm over here trying to plan the everything possible. He's just like, that's cool, but I just want to be married. And I'm just like, right. all right. So all right. we just gonna get married then, and then next year we gonna do it my way. We can do the Let's parties. Do that. So we yeah. negotiated on that. <laughs> yeah, my parents are definitely like, why don't you guys just go to the courthouse? Like, just just get it done. That's what my. Like, I mean, I think parents are really just. I feel like with female children, girl children, like the parents just really want that. Just like check mark yeah my daughters got married <laughs> is that because my brothers except my little brother they're in my brother my little brother's getting married this year they're mm-hmm. all married it is me and my mm-hmm. sister and my mom like oh my god but i will say my mom is worse than me she's like a, a momzilla she was like oh no 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 you have to do a big wedding and i was like mom oh for her because she no, wants to have exactly. fun <laughs> no, no you already had your wedding leave me alone i'm trying to i'm trying to just get through this we tired we are tired okay yeah, <laughs> it's a full time job. It's a full time job for sure. That's yeah. so fun. I was curious, you know, I noticed that you have been sharing more on Instagram about like trying to help other women through their own relationship and dating stuff. Like, what made you decide to start to share your journey like more publicly? And then, you know, were you like getting questions? Like, I watched one of your lives where you were like having people meet each other. I was like, this is. <laughs> dating show. This is hilarious. Yeah. So okay, <laughs> I got I got yeah, I gotta talk about that. Yeah. So what I so what made me do it was when I posted me and Isaac's engagement, it went viral. And right. I was getting so many questions like what how did how like what was your product because people also saw they knew my dear future husband stuff. So, like, because I've been right. doing that since 2016. So they're like what happened? Like was there a prayer? Like what 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 was like the the process? And I was like, what? Why are you asking me this? But then I realized I was like, oh, okay, y'all did see my process for the most part. And so right. I was like, you know what? What would be really dope is if I could actually give people tips, give women especially tips on what I went through because I feel like I went through everything possible you can go through in like re- relationships. And mm-hmm. I made it through that. And there were some relationships I didn't even know if I was gonna make it out of them. So I was like, I got to talk about this because it, it was a pro- It wasn't like I just woke up one day and I was like, oh, I'm healed. Let me just go. And you know what I'm saying? There was literal like work that I put in to make yeah. sure that I was ready because I didn't want to have that extra baggage that I was carrying that I had to give to my now next boyfriend or whatever it may have been. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I figured it out. It might not, and again, it might not work for everybody, but I figured out what worked for me. So I'm at least going to tell you what I did. And hopefully this helps somebody. And then I started, when I started posting these little tips, they're like, I had a, two guys that were like, oh my gosh, your video made me realize I need to propose to my girlfriend. And I had girls saying, oh my gosh, you made, you gave me hope. I'm 60 years old and I just gave up. And I was like, what? Oh, I'm about to, I'm about to give y'all more. And I was like, yeah. okay, 
maybe that this is part of my testimony. I'm supposed to help right. other people through whatever they're going through because that's what I did. I looked at other people on social media, on YouTube, mm-hmm. on whatever, and they yeah. helped me yeah. through my pain. So I'm like, I could do that. Right. I could be that for somebody else. And the day this, the day this show, though, <laughs> it's not going as expected. <laughs> I know. I was like, I don't know. First of all, some of the women, I'm like, I, ma'am, I don't know that you're marriage material. Well, yeah. Ma'am. And I, I'm trying not to be like Kevin Samuels and just be like, ma'am. Facts. <laughs> but, I know. Isn't that funny? Because, like, I am so anti Kevin Samuels. Well, obviously, he's not here with us anymore. But, like, when it was happening, I was like, eh, you know, Kevin Samuels, no. But mm, sometimes but. he would say those one little things where I'm like, yes, men don't care about your yes. degrees and you're this yes, and you're yes, that. Yes, like, yes. they are Girl. visual people. Like, they do want a yin to their gang. Like, I know. And 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 I, and I know a lot of women are probably gonna hate me for saying this, but I actually liked Kevin Samuels. There was there was things, there was a lot of things at, at points in in his conversation. I was like, okay, bro, you're doing the most. Calm down. This is the ego at this point. Yeah. But there yeah. was a lot that I was like, because I'm not gonna lie, Kevin Samuels also helped me through that too, because it was mm. it was while I was well, yeah, it was while he was yeah he was when did he pass? It was he was alive. Um, I think it might have been the year before last, but it would have been through your healing. Yeah, been, and I was watching him, yeah. and I was actually in a relationship with the, the guy that I said was like the worst person I dated. So after we broke up, and I was, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna still watch Kevin Samuels. I was like, okay, some of the stuff he's saying makes sense. And again, not everything. A lot of things he was saying was too much, but there were things I was yeah. like, hmm, this makes sense. Let me go try to actually dissect this and understand this. And I was like, yeah, makes sense. His, his rigidness was what I didn't agree with. Like, I don't cook. I don't clean, you know? Mm. And you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah. but I'm good. Like, Facts. I'm, yeah, because right, like, I could have for days. Right. Like, not saying that men don't care about that stuff, but like, there's so many other things that men care about. They that. only care about it if they can't afford it. If they can't afford to go get the DoorDash every day, and if they can't afford to get the meal prep, so exactly. you know, exactly. I'm just like, I, I wish I, I wish that I would have been able to go toe to toe with that man. I thought, look, everybody kept saying like I would go on him. there. I was like, I wanted to, but I was like, if he's because I'm sensitive, so I was, my ass, I would have been crying. Like, you shut up, shut up. <laughs> balling. So I was like, let me. I had to be in a better headspace before I go toe to toe with that man. But, but you're yeah. right, like. There, that type of stuff. I was like, you're doing too much. Don't no man care like, about no. that. Definitely, Let's if you're just, talking about these high value yeah. men, they have not, they have uh house cleaners. They have, like you said, a meal prep yeah. or chef. And I told when I yeah. when I when I met interior I designers, I'm you know, whatever. I I can I cook for myself when I want to. I said, but I have yes. I have house cleaners, and I also would I have meal prep like ninety percent of the yeah. time. The weekends I might yeah. I might do. And what something. I eat, what I eat is not what you're gonna eat. Like I'm not That's, making meat like i'm not gonna cook cheeseburgers and yes, fried chicken and exactly like and you want to eat that i get it you're a southern man you should eat that right i will not be barbecuing ribs that is exactly. making a salad right <laughs> <laughs> maybe a panini right <laughs> That's but all the other stuff, uh-uh. so i don't think you gotta uh-uh. find your person your person gonna understand you that's that's my thing like everybody else it don't matter when you find your person they yeah. gonna get you they're going to respect it. And they're going to give you more, honestly. So that's I what I learned. But the dating, I think the dating show for- is not going as planned, but we're going to get it back on track hopefully next weekend. So my goal, just to let everybody know, my goal is to hopefully find quality humans that actually are yes. intentional, that want to find love. And I'm trying to match them through life. And then I'm actually giving yes. them like some really cool gifts if they actually decide to like meet up and date. And things like that. Like I'm giving away like there's this lady that does date planning. So she plans like your whole entire day, gives you an itinerary, and they come and pick you up, drop you off, all of that. And I was like, this would be such a cute gift to somebody that's like trying to get that to know cute. each other. So you don't gotta drive nowhere, you don't gotta worry about him being weird, because we're we gonna yeah. make sure all that's good and blah blah blah. So that's my goal. Like I actually wanna make it intentional and not where it's just like these crazy dating shows that you see where women are getting cussed out, men are crazy. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's much. what it is right now. So we try, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to bring it back I've heard some horror in. stories. I think the men are out of control. I mean, I've heard some horror stories. Like, I was just talking to a girlfriend last night, and she was saying she went on this date with this guy, and he was this total catfish, and then he, like, FaceTimed her and was doing weird stuff. And I was like, oh, this is wow. tragic. It's you know, that so will bad. traumatize you. 
Oh. Have you heard of this new, there's like a ring that people are wearing, or maybe it's a bracelet where it's a, if you wear it, it shows that you're single. And there's huh? like millions of people apparently wearing this ring so that people can, and that you're open to being approached like in the wild, like at a restaurant or at a bar or something like that. What? Have that? I have not heard of that. <laughs> I think that's the coolest thing. Cause I met my person at a restaurant. Like, really? Okay. It was a friend of a friend. And he, my, my friend from college was like, oh, I'm going to invite my other friend. Like you guys are in the same industry. And I was like, whatever. And he was just there. And I was like, oh, (laughs) look you. What are you doing? Right. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but I think that the idea of like meeting people, IRL, I mean, I did the dating apps too. And it's just so hard to know when you don't have any context, like, I admire all my friends who got married and dated people from high school or college because it's like, okay, you have you have social connections, you have some sort of foundation, like you know this person's not a crazy person. Yeah. You can vet them. Meeting people off the internet. Yeah. How do you vet them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. So you're background right. checks. That that is a scary part about dating, dating sites for sure. And definitely not. I just feel like it's so much more dangerous. It's getting crazier and crazier every year. I feel so like when dangerous. you dating us, but I would say if you are going to do the dating apps, make sure that you're talking on the phone, FaceTiming. You don't yeah. actually go to their home. You don't let them pick you up. You meet them in an actual public place where there's a lot of people. And then you have to also use discernment. I mean, that's the only way you're going to know. I Even if you meet too. somebody in person, like, you still got to use discernment because they could be chilling in a public place but be crazy. So, like, everything is crazy. about discernment and not putting yourself in positions to where you're in danger. So knowing, okay, I just yeah. met this guy, so I'm not going to go to his house. And allow him to pick me mm-hmm. up because he can kidnap. You know what I'm saying? So those type of yeah, things. Yeah, and I'm not gonna give him my address. And, that exactly. And it's not even. And you can just tell him like, oh, you know, I just feel like it's not a you thing. It's a me thing. I just feel a little unsafe with the it, online dating in general. But like, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's a way to communicate it where it doesn't make someone feel like you think that they're a killer. But <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> you can be. You can be gentle with it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to hear more about the different projects you have coming out. I'm excited to hear about your book. When is your book released? Oh, actually, I and I, I forgot I brought my little props. So these are these are two of my shoes. These are my low tops. Yes. And then this is my. And those are at Champs. Yeah, these are at Champs. Well, these are these aren't okay. yet, but they will be. Actually, these are at Champs. These are at Champs. We just we just got them in there. Mm-hmm. But this is my new book. It's called More Than an Athlete. And again, I kind of told you a little bit, this is about kind of like my, my story. Everybody was asking me, how did I get into football? How did I get into entrepreneurship? I do mm-hmm. put some of my dating process. So as I was writing this book, I wrote this last year, right? I yeah. was actually, I met Isaac while I was writing this book. So I was, mm. so you see kind of the early stages of like what was happening. I was also going through like that depression up and down stuff as well. And how yeah. I kind of got through that is in this book as well. But this is like really super raw and about how I, mm-hmm. I literally overcame all of these different obstacles from injuries to depression to relationships to all types of stuff. And a lot of people don't know a lot of these things about me that's in this book. So people didn't know that I used to try to rap, which is interesting. We're not going to talk about that area of my life, but that's in here too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't even know I'm a twin. So there's just a lot of like, oh, this is who you really are, not just this yeah. like football girl. On social Instagram, media. football, yeah, basketball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you can find it on Amazon. You can also find it on barnesandnobles okay. com, and also my website, which is just santiadeck dot com. Amazing. Well, I'm definitely gonna go order it. I didn't know you had a twin until you said it like 30 minutes ago. I was like, a oh, twin? Where's yeah, nobody. The twin but you know what? I don't. I don't be talking about it like that either. But yes, I was on Reddit. <laughs> so cool. Well, thank you for spending time with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to The Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. I look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.